Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. That was very nice of you. I just, I, was, I nearly went like that there. I had to stop myself. <laughs> Do you know? What's that? This, eh? Uh, when that happens to you live and you're not an American, it's the best laxative known to man. It happened to me in the bottom line, a club in New York, and the audience went, ooh, I thought, shit, they're coming to get me. <laughs> when will I tell you something? This, <laughs> I will be telling you several things as the night, <laughs> as the night wears merrily forward. But I've got a lot to say, and, uh, and it comes out kind of, sometimes it comes out kind of in the wrong order. Please, please don't worry about this. I personally couldn't give a fuck. So, so don't, don't let it get you down. There's a bit of profanity, but I like that. And I'm rather good at it too. So there's nothing worse than somebody who can't swear trying to do it, you know? Like some posh English guy going, oh, you fucking bastard. You know, because it's supposed to be violent, you know? I personally just use it like commas and exclamation marks. <laughs> Gives the thing a bit of funk, you know, a bit of shape about it, you know, lumpiness. But, you know, you know, fuck, I don't need to explain it, but... But, you know, if you, if you, if you, fuck, 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 it's kind of staccato, fuck, 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 and it's got its own sort of rhythm, do, da, do, da, do, fuck, fuck, do, 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 fuck, fuck. Oh, I'm trying to describe, because I don't really resemble anyone that you'll know. So I'm trying to set you up here, right? Because this is weird, because this is on, for television, right? Uh, the HBO. I say this with great aplomb. See, watch me, great confidence. This is for HBO. As if, as if I knew what HBO was, right? <laughs> HBO, he says. HBO, you know. I haven't a fucking clue what HBO is. <laughs> right. It's a, it's a wee box on your telly. It's a wee box and people say, what's that box on your telly, Bill? HBO. <laughs> I don't know, the cable goes into the wall and I'm fucking if I know what happens after that. <laughs> Have you got cable? Oh, yes. Where does the cable go? Bugger the final. <laughs> I have absolutely no right, I'll tell you. Now, this is the truth I'm going to tell you here. The 20th century seems to have caught me unawares. I have a video machine that shows films to itself and won't let me fucking see them. <laughs> it's a selfish bastard. <laughs> I have a good mind to throw it out, but I think it might have something up its fucking sleeve. <laughs> I can't even set the time on the bastard. I've tried. <laughs> and I, I can tape things. Not always the thing I wanted, I'm sure. I'm sure it tapes things that it wants to see itself, the bastard. <laughs> I've always been suspicious of it anyway. How does it fucking do that? How does it know? How does it know which channel? At what time it goes? I mean, can you imagine your video at home saying, oh, well, time to switch on and tape the fucking program. <laughs> I don't like the idea of it being in there on its own, going through the drawers and looking at stuff. <laughs> no, call me a sentimental old fool. I don't fucking like it. <laughs> I'm sure it has parties with other fucking VCRs. <laughs> watching fucking films that it won't let me, because you, you tape stuff. Programs for the t <laughs> right, and you come home, you switch it on, and it's got it, you know, and it, it goes <laughs> all business like noises. And there's a, there's a thrill for me when it, when it grabs the, the box, the, the thing, and takes it a go. <laughs> 
the lights on, it's fucking working. <laughs> my daughter, see, she's, she knows about digital stuff. I've got Roman numerals on my fucking watch. She, she goes, oh, don't be silly. <laughs> and it was right, I was like, bitch, right. <laughs> and she goes to a boarding school, right? So she went away back to school. While she was there, there was a power cut. <laughs> you call it a power outage, don't you? <laughs> outage. That's a good word, outage. Fuck. So. <laughs> a fucking power outage. Give me peace. So, there was a. <laughs> maybe, maybe your power goes out. Maybe it's a bit overload and ours gets cut by fuckwits with tractors and bulldozers. <laughs> maybe, maybe there's a difference. Oh, I've cut your fucking power. <laughs> you know, some tattooed fuckwit Neanderthal. <laughs> oh, <I'm fucking laughs> <fucking good. laughs> it's, it's, it's nice, you know, to be in America because it's the weirdest place on earth. And I must say, it really appeals to me. It's the only place I've ever been in where there were so many people as fucking mad as me. There's a 24-hour drive-in taxidermist. You really need that, I feel. <laughs> That's a must. Turning up with dead cats at three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> it's bizarre. I mean, that, uh, that's a town I want to live in. You know what I mean? And you buy the house and they say, it's on the fault line, you know. I'll buy it. Give me the fucking thing. <laughs> we're right on the San Andreas. Fucking that bang comes. We're right into the valley. Oh, how much is that? <laughs> how many million did you say? <laughs> Wrap it up. I'll fucking take it away just now. It's, isn't it extraordinary? My house. If there's a slightest rumble, buff. I'm in Ventura fucking Boulevard watching the telly. <laughs> <laughs> I was in an earthquake before. I was here. I was watching telly and I had the weirdest feeling. It was like an elevator going down quickly. Like, you know that? <laughs> you know that? Like your, your liver has just passed your Adam's apple. <laughs> Anyhow, this feeling went, whoop. And I thought, what was that? And at the time, I had been indulging in various mind-expanding substances. <laughs> it's a stuff called McEwen's Export. It's a Scottish <laughs> beer. <laughs> so I just thought, oh, that's a, just my hangover. But it happened again. But this time, it was about an hour later. Whew, I'm still watching TV. And there was a Chinese-American woman eh, on the news. And she was reading the news, and when it went, whoa, to me, she went, what was that? <laughs> and I said, I don't know. <laughs> Is it true? I just heard it coming out of my mouth. <laughs> now, I, I meant to explain to you, just because some people come and see me, and they find me to be a major irritant. <laughs> you know, that's my style. They, some people like my comedy, but they hate my style. And I say, fuck them, we laugh at them. Ha, 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 ha. So, the, <laughs> the thing is, I, I have a lot of uh, ideas sometimes, and sometimes none. And some, sometimes I trundle through stuff I've said a million times before, and then suddenly something will come in and say, talk about me, talk about me, talk about me, it'll fucking go away. And so I have to talk about it instantly, or it goes away and it fucking infuriates me. It usually comes back, but sometimes that's like next April. <laughs> you know? And so all these ideas are all here and they go round and round and round. And, and I thought I was mentally ill at one point, and I went and asked some Buddhists in fucking Lockerbie of all places. <laughs> Remember that? That's, that's Lockerbie in deaf and dumb language. So, the, and, there's a Tibetan monastery there. 
It's called Sami Ling, and these Tibetan Buddhists. It's very, very nice. If you're ever in Scotland, you must go and see it. It's, you know, really, you would love it. You would, you'd like it. How dare you speak when I'm on? Do you know who I am? I'm in show business. We laugh at hecklers. Ha ha! No. There is, and it's gold, it's stunning. So you, you drive through Scotland and all these shepherds, meh, meh, come here, you wee beauty. <laughs> oh, I love you, come here, meh. Don't run away, say hasty, you wee beauty. <laughs> right, oh, I've got nothing against that. I'm an open-minded person. <laughs> In Scotland, they would have you believe we invented that sheep stuff, and it's <laughs> probably true, I would imagine. Probably true. Yeah. In Scotland, they say, if you're going to shag a sheep, take it to the edge of a mountain so as it pushes back better. <laughs> so the... Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Didn't you know that? <laughs> meh, meh. Oh, I love you when you talk dirty, you wee beauty. <laughs> You come round the corner, gold, it's gold. It's, you must go. I went there and I asked them about this stuff going round my head and they said, enjoy it. Sit back and enjoy it. Watch it like a train going past. So that's what I now do. I watch my fricking brain going past. <laughs> and now I know I'm mentally ill and I'm much better for it. So this stuff goes round and I, to explain it to you, it's, it's choosing what to talk about. Like you, it comes by like that. And the merry-go-round in a park is the best way to describe it. You know those merry-go-rounds that you push, it's got like banisters into the center and a, a round bit at the base. And uh, <laughs> your father would take you to the park and put you on it. It's a kind of vomiting machine, really. <laughs> You're supposed to enjoy it. I fucking hated it all my life. And uh, on you go and enjoy yourself. You know. <laughs> Scotland's like that, you know. Violent. Maybe not anymore. I mean, it used to be. When I was a child, Scotland was a violent place. And uh, if parents were all being violent to their children. All my friends, their parents too. Biff, take that, yeah, fucker. <laughs> Bush. <laughs> it was the done thing. It was like fucking folk dancing in Scotland. Step to your father, whack it, whack it. <laughs> See that move? You think he goes skiing, that boy? No stranger to Big Bear, him. No. That was behind a couch avoiding my father. Whenever I'd done something, which was most days, my aunt would say, get into that room and wait till your father comes home. And he would come home. Where's the bastard? He's in there. And he'd come into the room. Come here. And usually I just went over. And he would beat the shit out of me and that would be that. But I remember one night, I don't know what happened inside my brain, but I heard my, my mouth going, no. <laughs> what? No. <laughs> Come here. Oh. <laughs> right. I'll just have to come and fucking get you then, won't I? And he came up to the couch and I was behind it and I made the mistake of my life. I went like that. <laughs> and of course he would go, right, yep. And I would go. Two minutes, he was fucked. He was on his knees. <laughs> Steam coming out of his ears. His face is purple. Don't think I'm tired, boy. <laughs> There's phlegm coming out of his ass. This guy was knackered. He just couldn't take it anymore. He went, right, you bastard! Came right through the couch. Splintered wood and cushions everywhere. 
grabbed my wrist, held me up, the way the angler holds a fish up for the photograph. And I was bent like that, trying to get my arse as far away from his hand as I could. And he would swing at me. There's a thing they do in Scotland, they hit you in the rhythm of the argument. Don't you ever let me see you doing that again. Isn't the world a weird, isn't America weird? I was out on my thing. They, somebody told me today what it's called. I was calling it a veranda for a while. And then I, I took to calling it a platform. Somebody informed me today that it's called a something else. A perch or some fucking thing. A deck! A deck. <laughs> I was... <laughs> fucking perch. <laughs> I was... <laughs> I was reading, uh, what's it called again? You'll never have lunch in this town again. Uh, I was, and you know, somebody gave me it and said, there's the lowdown in Hollywood. Oh, yeah. So I read it and I got the lowdown, but I don't know anybody. So I've got the filthy lowdown and people I don't know. <laughs> so I got myself a Scottish tan while I was doing it. You don't see bodybuilders like that, do you? <laughs> it's um, <laughs> America's first head and arm transplant. <laughs> I love it. That's a Scottish tan. That's the way we all come back from holidays. <laughs> And you're on your fourth fucking nose. Hello, how you doing? <laughs> See, what you must understand about Scottish people, well, you don't must understand, but I'm going to tell you anyway, is that we are not white. We are not. I, I hear people on television saying, well, we as black people resent the fact that you white people, well, I'm not a white person. I am, a, a, I'm fucking pale blue. <laughs> and the Irish tend to be pink, I find. <laughs> they run to the pinkish. We are more your powder blue. <laughs> so I was on my thing, my pad, perch, thing, deck, deck. I, it was just, and I, I was thinking about the Iraq, the desert thing. It was, it was extraordinary, wasn't it? I watched it every day. And four weeks I hadn't seen a fucking band-aid yet, you know. There was bombs flying in all directions, especially those ones where it said, now watch the bomb here. Here we go. Right, then it goes, it's gonna go through the second window on the left. <laughs> what? Whoosh, fucking building powder. Yeah, well done. Yeah. Smart bombs. There was two things come out of that war for me. Smart bombs and friendly fire. <laughs> the guy who shoots you's got a big fucking smile on his face. <laughs> friendly fire. Hey, Willie, how's it going? Bang. Hey, nice to see you. Hey, look at us. Bang, you fucker. Right. <laughs> What's friendly fire? How dare they? Collateral damage. Friendly, <laughs> friendly fire. It's a, you see, it's such a consolation when you're on the stretcher and your balls are missing. <laughs> Do you know it was a friend of yours who did it? <laughs> Smart bombs, I, I couldn't believe it. You know, it's like, it's like a nightmare, it's like a comedy scenario, you know, what a, a smart bomb going to the second window left. It's like, bombagram, you're watching television. Oh, <laughs> uh, who is it? Bombagram! <laughs> but now, how did I get to that now? Let me start properly. 
My, yes, oh, I was going to tell you about my father beating me up. <laughs> anyway, my daughter, I'll come back to that. My daughter went back to school and the power outage happened. The power cut. The guy with the tattoos and the fucking thing, boom, poof, house in darkness. The come up and was, the power came back on, but the fucking time had gone from the VCR. It was once again a row of turquoise zeros <laughs> flashing. And I couldn't fucking fix it. And she goes to boarding school. The bastards wouldn't let her come home to fix the fucking thing. <laughs> fucking snobs, I hate them. No, she can't come home. How dare you? Oh, bastard. <laughs> <laughs> and do you know the way I've got it to stop it? I've, I've piled tapes in front of it. <laughs> I went to the pictures a few weeks ago. I, I love going to the pictures here. Go to the movies, it's brilliant. You can park your car and all, and you get fucking ice cream with nuts on it. <laughs> oh, I've died and gone to heaven and all these great movies. I love, saw Awakenings eh, with, you know, De Niro and Robin Williams, and I loved every second of it. And then I got my newspaper from England. I read The Independent, and it, occasionally it's sent to me. And there was a review of the film, which was very, very odd. I must tell you this. It said, while I enjoyed this film immensely, it would have been 10 times better had it stuck to the true story. And it, according to them, this man, this critic, who seemed terribly well informed, he said, as they all do, he said, he said, the real story is they were given, didn't they, for those of you who have never seen the film, they, these people are sort of in bed, uh, veg, but vegetables, people, uh, you know, comatose. Right. <laughs> British Conservatives, you know. <laughs> They've got, you know, and they give them this drug and they all come to life and fall in love and dance and have jolly times. And then it sort of becomes regressive and they go back to their state and it's a very sad affair. Well, according to this critic, they administered the drug L-Dopa, which made me laugh, L-Dopa. <laughs> I thought that was slang for fucking marijuana from Mexico. Hey, hello, we're going to L-Dopa. Oh, the free Mexican Air Force is flying tonight. <laughs> Yippee, I think I'm an orange. I think I'll jump out the fucking window. No, it was... I could never cope with drugs, you know. Some people think I'm a junkie, but I'm actually this old. I, I've never, I've never managed to grasp the point of drugs. It's always totally obliterated me. So like anything, you know, here, try this, fucking great shoe. <laughs> Fucked! <laughs> you know, in the 60s, I used to have a five cent a day habit. <laughs> Puff! Especially that American, if we make these skinny joints, here, try that. I've fucking gone! <laughs> and I always admired people who could take it and go and do things. I could fucking... <laughs> <laughs> I remember being in bed with the most beautiful woman. She was an extraordinary person. God, I sometimes think about her. She fucked off and left me, of course. She said, I've got some great stuff. I thought, yes! I mean, the war was over, the battle had been won, we were in bed, for Christ's sake. I'd been nice, we'd been changed, she came to the concert, we had dinner, it was lovely. She said, yeah, let's go to bed. I said, what a fucking good idea. <laughs> yeah. There we were, and she said, hang on, I've got the most amazing stuff. I said, oh, good. <laughs> Always happy to be part of the game. You know, I'd hear like this, the fucking beard, right, let's go. She went, here. <laughs> I was like one of them fucking Egyptian statues. I'm like, she goes, you okay? I remember thinking, God, it would be lovely to touch her. Go over there, you fucker! She got up and went away, I was lying on. Help me! Help me! 
That was me till the morning. It happened twice, another time in Dundee. She vomited on me. <laughs> I was talking about awakenings. Robert De Niro. <laughs> Williams. According to this critic, who seems to know more than most people, the true story was they administered the L-Dopa. That's where I lost the track, right? <laughs> L-Dopa Grande. <laughs> they administered, apparently, they administered the drug in real life to, to the, the, the fellow. And he did wake up, but he masturbated his life away. He just went for it every... every Fucking waking moment, Ooh, right? <laughs> Which would have made a rather short movie, I think. You know? <laughs> and now back to Robert De Niro. <laughs> He'd never have taken the part. He'd never have done it. How are you doing, Robert? Oh, fuck. Right. And you know how he's one of the method guys. He goes and lives it first. <laughs> He'd be a shadow of his former self <sighs> in some fucking toilet in Central Park. What's he doing? Oh, he's rehearsing. Leave him alone. Right, so... <laughs> See, mas masturbation. It's, it's such an extraordinary thing. It's, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing. It was, it was invented with the poor in mind, I think, masturbation. You know, you can always have a... Look, I've never known anyone who was prepared to tell the truth about masturbation. Do you? No, fuck it. Me? Fuck off. Never. No. What? How dare you? I haven't done it since I was four. <laughs> if, if indeed I did it then, which I very much doubt, I wouldn't even touch it when I'm having a piss. I use one of them things they use in cake shops. Come on. <laughs> this part of the show is a guide to more fulfilling masturbation. <laughs> now, I know you're highly unlikely to masturbate, any of you, because you look like decent types to me. <laughs> but you may be watching TV. You may be watching Santa Barbara or something. Or one of those soap things, right? You know the ones in the morning that are made for the hard of thinking, right? <laughs> you know, where people talk when there's nobody in the room. They talk to telephones. Oh, Bob, please phone. Who the fuck are you talking to, Mrs? <laughs> and they talk to letters. They pick up the mail and go, please be from Charlie. The fuck? Read the fucking thing. <laughs> I get, oh, I get so angry. But anyway, you may be watching that and you go, oh, these people are rich and famous. I've lost the will to live. <laughs> I think I'll go and jump off a fucking bridge somewhere. I'll jump in front of some traffic. That's what I'll do. On the other hand, I could have a quick wank. <laughs> that would cheer me up no end. Because that's the way it comes into because the devil finds work for idle hands. <laughs> see, I see this as missionary work, you see? <laughs> now, the most awful thing that can happen while you're masturbating isn't being caught, although that is awful. Being caught in mid-masturb is. <laughs> now, it's extremely difficult to find a good excuse for what you're doing. <laughs> Tonight, I am going to give you that excuse. <laughs> this could improve the rest of your life no end. <laughs> now, you must be quick with the excuse. So, you're in mid-master. Master, master, master. Oh, and the word wank, I must explain that. I don't know where it comes from. I've asked many, many people. My personal theory is it's those army beds. You know those metal beds you get in the army with springs on it? 
And I think that's because that's the noise they make, isn't it? <laughs> I have traveled the highways and byways of this planet. I have never met a bed that goes, Master Pete, Master Pete, Master Pete. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you're in mid master and the door bursts open and it's your nosy brother. Fuck are you <laughs> You don't let him finish the sentence. Don't let him complete, don't give him the joy, the satisfaction. Of, when he goes, what the fuck? Come in immediately with, thank God you're here. <laughs> well, that. <laughs> well, that deeply upsets them, right? Thank God I'm here. That's a three steps back shock that I'm amazed. Thank God I'm here. <laughs> what does he mean? I thought he was having a wank. <laughs> Thank God you're here and not a minute too soon. <laughs> really? Well, it was the fucking story. Would... You'll never believe this. No, probably not. <laughs> I was, I was walking across the bloody room there when the biggest Fucking hairy spider you ever saw ran out from underneath it. I thought, fucking hell was that? Huge bugger, the size of a soup plate, legs like this fucking thing here, came scalping towards me and right up the leg of my trousers. I thought, Jesus Christ, it's the way up the leg of my trousers. And you probably remember, only last week I was reading that book, remember? <laughs> what book was that? <laughs> Tarantulas and their wily ways. No. You, you, fucking, you mentioned it. You said, what the fuck are you reading that for? I remember. It said in the book, it said, there's nothing tarantulas love more than to sink their teeth into people's testicles. Ooh. And I, <laughs> I thought, that's what the bugger's up to. It's a way up the leg of my trousers to sink the teeth into the family jewels. Before you could say Jack Robinson, I whipped the tweeds down, and not a second too soon, it was up like that. <laughs> the bastard, look at people like that. <laughs> Just as you walked in the door, and I was going, get the fuck out of there, you! <laughs> Jesus. So where was it today? There was the condom thing on. Because everybody's gone condom crazy. And it's, see, when I was growing up, condoms were kind of dirty things that dirty people used. If I find one of them on you, my boy, you'll just leave this house. <laughs> if ever one of them falls out your pocket. I had these fucking spring-loaded pockets in my house. <laughs> my mother kept finding things that fell out my fucking pocket. Things that were sewn in <laughs> pop out when she was walking past. <laughs> if I ever find anything that's fallen out of your pocket, any of the dirty things you get a dirty. <laughs> but they were regarded as rather slithery, horrible things that slithery, horrible people used. And there was, a, and you, you either brought them in the barbers from kind of smelly barbers, or something for the weekend. <laughs> that was the line from the barber, something for the weekend, sir. Because British people only screw on a Saturday. <laughs> it's desperate, isn't it? The British were regarded as pretty bad lovers. I don't think that's particularly true. But in literature, it's, it's odd, you know, and in movies. Now, what was that? Brief encounters. But they never get down to it. They never go, yes! You're just dying for him to go, oh, come here, get the knickers off and let's fucking do it here! Let's do it in front of the fucking train! Let's die! Let's die doing it! Fuck it! But no, that's it. Thank you, darling. It's been a wonderful, wonderful time, and I love you, I love you, I love you. Fucking give her one! Ah! Right. See, dogs know, dogs know how to do it. Dogs! Don't take prisoners. They fucking know that they're fucking wiser than us. 
You never, you never, see, you never see a dog going up to another dog and saying, "What's your sign?" They don't fuck about. <laughs> Come here. Right. Female dog. Tick, 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 tick. The day arrives. <whistles> Male dog. <whistles> Woof. <laughs> Female dog. Thanks very much. Anywhere, crossroads, traffic, beep beep, ah, fuck off. <laughs> and they like it. You know, you never get dogs writing into magazines. I have trouble achieving orgasm. <laughs> I have trouble getting an erection. Wham! Well! <laughs> And the fucking legs going across, across, the back's arched, the arse is in, oh yes! The eyes are fucking rolling back. Ah, turn for the... They know! And they share it. Come on, legs! Oh. It's a big... It looks like a big hairy igloo. There's about 50 of them fucking, uh, fucking their brains out. <laughs> That's my ear! That's my fucking... I don't give a fuck! The bitch left 20 minutes ago. They don't give a shit. <laughs> oh, God. I'll never forget. I used to, I was in various bands, you know, I used to be a musician. I started as a folk singer, playing the banjo and stuff. Folk music, the folk revival, the folk scene was bizarre. There was all these people in pubs singing about mining disasters. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good night out, you know. <laughs> Fucking lifeboat tragedies. <laughs> I'll never forget that awful night in 1894. 700 sailors dead upon the floor. <laughs> Join in, come on, have a good time. Fucking dead, dead they were, dead as fucking stone. <laughs> we're all dead, you know, that's why we're alone. <laughs> oh, he's dead, he's dead, everybody, he's dead, he's fucking dead, dead as fucking stone. <laughs> 700 children were murdered in their beds. More! More! OK, 729 were murdered. It's a weird time. I bought a lovely badge in San Francisco. It says, if I had a hammer, there'd be no more folk singers. <laughs> in the luxurious position of being a teenager when rock and roll was invented. And it was for us. I'm 48, you know, and I was about 14, I think, when Bill Haley did Rock Around the Clock, and I thought, fuck, you know. And Buddy Holly. Oh, yeah, it was like getting out of jail. Yes, that's for me! Yes, I'm alive! And your parents didn't understand it. What's that fucking noise? Turn that fucking din down. It's mine! It's fucking mine! And you're all bastards! And the whole world changed. And it was brilliant. I walked bop, a loom up, a lot, bam, boom. I fucking understood that. I thought I... <laughs> Tootie fruity. Oh, fuck. Because previous, it was a nightmare. They would bring records home. I'm a pink toothbrush. You're a blue toothbrush, have we met somewhere before? Well, I'm a blue toothbrush, and to be true, toothbrush, I think we met by the bathroom door. <laughs> it was like being in a fucking mental hospital. <laughs> oh, she wears red feathers and a hooly hooly skirt. 
That was before. Dun, 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 dun. What the fuck? That? <laughs> oh, Jesus. But then, in rock and roll, there's weird as well. I've never understood a whiter shade of pale. People say, oh, it's a fucking classic. <laughs> I think it's a pile of pretentious shit myself. <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> as for MacArthur Park, give me a fucking break. <laughs> Somebody left your cake out in the rain, fuck off. like beaches. <laughs> I've never liked the beach. Hated it all my fucking life. I, there's something, I, I think it was being Scottish that did it. We have beaches, but they're extraordinarily uncomfortable places. <laughs> because I remember Aberdeen, northeast of Scotland, the North Sea laps up on the shores of Aberdeen. It's actually the Arctic Ocean. It goes through a little name change as it comes down <laughs> past Iceland. It veers right and becomes the Atlantic left, and it's the fucking North Sea. <laughs> Doesn't kid me any. A hundred miles out to sea, there are oil rigs drilling for oil. And there's guys, an announcement's been made. Wear a survival suit at all times. You must wear a survival suit. You wouldn't last more than two minutes in that water. Hundred miles away, there's mothers taking their children's clothes off. <laughs> Get in there! In you go! <laughs> See, I'm married to an Australian person, and she's all beachy too. Let's go to the beach. I can't imagine anything more fucking awful than going to a beach and getting sand up your ass. And Aberdeen was my, I told you about. I was on holiday with the school. We all, today we're going swimming, boys. Oh, fuck, no. <laughs> Let's hear it for a good swim. Oh, fucking hooray. <laughs> and off we went to the beach with this Mr. Hegarty, an own pervert of this parish, <laughs> watching the boys. Oh, fucking, if I was your age. <laughs> And we all had those terrible... Now, there was none of your speedo swimming lycra jobs. You know, one of these costumes, second skin, fucking zipping through the water nonsense. Big woolly fuckers up to here. <laughs> with a belt on them and a pocket for some fucking inexplicable purpose. <laughs> and a white belt, you know. And they were like knitted cotton. They were big lumpy fit things, big dark blue jobs. And run down, you'd go in the water, they would grow. <laughs> 12 times their normal fucking size. Before you come out, you'd have to gather them all up. Dragging you to the fucking bottom, you know. <laughs> you, come, you walk out and the crutch is here. <laughs> People could look in <laughs> and see you, Willie, if they were really lucky. In the North Sea, it was about that fucking thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Willie. <laughs> bing, 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 bing. We're the least sexy tourists in the world. Scottish, a wee fucking thing like this. <laughs> and then you're older, you go abroad to the Caribbean, Mediterranean, you see these guys walking around. Fucking thing like that. <laughs> Got a baby's arm hanging out a fucking cram. Teacher hated me. Conley, smart ass, into the sea. Oh, fuck, eh? Oh, fucking go. Hey, hey, this is uh, uh. Complain, complain. Get in that fucking water. I took my trousers off. 
in his horrible pants, pale blue person, <laughs> heading for the sea, the fish are going, fuck that. <laughs> What the fuck's the pale blue thing coming? When... <laughs> pale blue thing with the tiniest willy you've ever seen in your fucking life. <laughs> you must have weird sexual organs probably in that fucking pocket thing. <laughs> and the friends, your so-called school friends are going, oh, go on, Bill, on you go. Uh, thanks very much. I will never forget it as long as I live. My feet went in the water. I heard my body, I heard this noise. Do you know, have you ever had a real fright, you know, like, I mean, a serious fright, like maybe uh, in the jungle or something, where, where a big hairy thing is going, Rawr, you f ah! and you, you've got something to me, and you hear, or if you're in a, a war situation and somebody shoots at you, and you, you, you hear your body going, oh! No, it's, <laughs> it's not like, fucking hell, help! It's not like that at all. You know, like the movies, ah! It's not like that, it's a weird noise from deep, deep in your psyche. Something that's printed in your DNA from fucking centuries ago, it's, oh! <laughs> Something when you lived up a fucking tree, Oh! <laughs> it's the weirdest noise you'll ever hear. I'll tell you what. Have you ever heard a boiled potato being shoved up a donkey's ass? <laughs> it's exactly the same noise. <laughs> this, the coldness of this water was beyond pain into some other realm of fucking torture. <laughs> and I look back and all those bastards are going, go further in, go on, you big fucking Nancy boy. <laughs> I went further in, up to my knees, lost the will to live. Couldn't, couldn't move another muscle. Oh, oh. And I looked back and they were all laughing and pointing. I thought, what are they fucking pointing at? Billy, look, look. Oh no, there was a speedboat. This bastard on a speedboat. Shh, across there and a wave came. Oh, this other noise. This other noise appeared from here somewhere. <laughs> I could feel the boiling potato. <laughs> I could see this wave inexorably slipping towards me. <laughs> I look back there and go, I will never. As long as my arse looks south, I will never, ever forget it. That wave coming up the inside of my thighs and kissing the bottom of my scrotum. <laughs> I... It's lovely, I like this, and it's lovely living here in America, and uh, it's lovely. Do you know that this, my stuff is accepted? Because I, all my life, I've laughed at awful things. And, and I've always, I felt a bit strange. I, when I was in my teens, I felt all right about it because all my friends were the same, you know. They would say, oh, fuck, Bill, you should have been here yesterday, fucking laugh. <laughs> I thought I was gonna fucking hurt myself. We were out in Willie's car, he got a puncture. We got the jack out like that, the fucking thing broke and fell in his hand. <laughs> oh, fuck, I thought I was gonna hurt myself. Oh, the three of us lifted the front of the car, his fucking finger fell off. <laughs> I couldn't look, I couldn't fucking look. 
I had to go and tell his mother. I could hardly fucking speak. <laughs> but look, it's, uh, it's, it's been a pleasure talking to you. You're very nice people. Um, try and think of something nice to say to you. <laughs> so, those of you who have enjoyed the show, tonight, when you go home, you'll tell the babysitter. She'll say, how was the show? And you'll say, oh, it was good. I laughed, I fucking laughed. <laughs> oh, you'll be at work tomorrow. I'll say, did we, out, did we out last night? Oh, I went to see that Billy Connolly. I fucking laughed. <laughs> My face was sore. I, f I tell you, I was sitting there and I thought my cheeks feel very sore. What had happened, my teeth had got dry and my lip had stuck up. <laughs> and, but those fucking wedding pictures. <laughs> and <laughs> I t it was, oh, was he good? Oh, fucking laugh. What did he say? I have no fucking idea. <laughs> It would seem to be the sort of uh, comedy version of Chinese food that kind of goes away. <laughs> and all you're left with is a desire to say fuck all the time. <laughs> Which can get you in terrible trouble. And you'll try and control yourself, but you'll find, you know, a taxi, oh, fuck you! Oh, God, <laughs> But uh, if it's any consolation, it does go away. Just relax. You're basically very good people. And it does eventually disappear. Thanks for your company. I've enjoyed you immensely. And good night. <laughs>